Well, good news. It's finally started to happen. People have decided uh, for multiple reasons to add new radios to their arsenal outside of that of the humble Baofeng and Chinese radios of similar quality. Again, nothing wrong with those radios, but they're fairly limited in what they offer most individuals. For some of you, that's all you need and that's fine, but there's a wealth of people that are starting to get interested in parks on the air, contesting from home or just having a much better radio system at home and obviously getting into high frequency radio which is that really long communication path line that we get during the day and night cycle so a question i got recently from josh edward hey congratulations on getting your license and getting active in amateur radio is what is a good second radio or what is going to what should be my next good radio or first good radio we buy lots of radios because they're kind of you know cheap and they kind of do a thing and you know we're kind of cool with them and whatever but oftentimes we lament over what's like the like the best radio that i can buy for my for my budget what i'm looking for capabilities to get out of the radio as far as the features and functionalities and that kind of thing. So this is a highly personal question and I'm going to be dancing around this thing like crazy. But I think obviously the point to get started with is set yourself a budget. If there is simply a dollar amount you are unwilling to go over, and by the way, you should set one. There's no reason we should be going poor over amateur radio, right? You should all be saying yes at this point. Set yourself a budget and then, you know, let's not try and go past that point. And also keep in mind that your budget for a lot of you is going to incorporate things like a power supply, feed line, and antenna, particularly if you're getting started in HF. So keep that in mind. Now, unfortunately, this video is not going to be simply as easy for most of you as Josh is going to say a radio, I'm going to buy it, and then the world will be happy and I will love amateur radio for the rest of my days. No, <laughs> this is likely going to require you to figure out what the heck it is you want to do with amateur radio. Sure, getting on HF. Well, I mean, that's pretty broad. You need to give me a lot more than that. If you say, I only want to do parks on the air. I've already tried it. I really like it. That's where it's at. Then, okay, there's a couple of radios that fit that spot pretty well. And there's actually a couple of different prestige paths you can go down, like go box, trunk portable, car, in car only radio type of thing. You get the idea. If you told me that, oh no, I just want a really good radio that's gonna be my base station radio, it's an all-in-one radio, I want to do VHF, UHF, and HF. See, that's also fairly limiting. There's only really one or two radios that exist on the market for that. Cough, cough, it is the ICOM 7100 now. I believe the Yaesu 991 Alpha is going to become no longer in production. I could be wrong on that but I feel like both of those are getting a little long in the tooth. So if you really wanted one or two of those radios, you should probably go get those right now. Speaking of getting radios right now, I have a link in the description to Gigaparts. I have a affiliate link with Gigaparts. Yes, it's an affiliate link. If you use the code Josh and you go to the link in the description, you could get up to 5%, up to 10% off on certain items that you likely need if you're thinking about a radio. Now, if you tell me, oh no, I'm really interested in doing satellite, I only want to do satellite, satellite's where it's at, that's all I'm interested in. Well, then we don't need to play around with HF radios at all, right? We would be looking at a completely different set of radios with different types of antennas and different capabilities. Do you see where I'm going? I'm dancing pretty hard, right? I'm not really diving it at any one spot because we need to really lay out what it is you want to do. So let's start simple. Parks on the air, you want to maybe put the radio in a backpack and you want to go sit at a park bench and run from there. The radio for that's pretty simple. It's going to be a Yaesu FT891. That would be my starting point. 100 watt radio, pretty simple to use in the field and we'll get the job done. Many thousands of people are enjoying that radio for parks on the air. Now, as a caveat to that, there are a multitude of QRP radios that I carry that I prefer to the 891 for a couple of reasons I will cover, but cost certainly isn't one of them. The FT891 is popular because it is inexpensive. It is a cheaper radio, at least from an HF standpoint, and again, truly does get the job done. So taking nothing away from that radio there. However, I generally will always carry the ICOM 705 with me. That is a 10 watt only radio. So 90 less watts, right? So as far as voice goes, not nearly as effective as the FT891. But with the ICOM 705, I get VHF, UHF, 
and different features that I like to utilize for doing digital modes, meaning I connect my computer to the radio and I'm able to send data through my antenna to other amateur radio operators that receive that data and we make contacts or just exchange data that way. Also, the 705 is more portable than the 891, not by a lot, but it is. And when you consider that the power is already internal to the 705 via its battery pack, it makes a more friendly travel buddy, if you will. Simply throw it in a bag, throw it in your backpack with an antenna, and I'm pretty much good to go. Now, obviously, I can't cover every little incidental thing that makes you unique as who you are and what you're interested in radio. Some of you are already saying to yourself, well, I don't do digital mode. Great, the 891 is probably fine for you. Some of you are saying, well, I'm really only going to do CW. Ah, well, then a whole world of radios opens up for you, and I'm probably not the best person to answer that. With that said, you can get by with a much less powerful radio. In fact, I picked up this uh, nice little Elecraft K1 at the Huntsville Ham Fest a couple of weekends ago. Yeah, this is I paid vintage prices for this. This is $500. But this is a CW only 10 watt, sorry, 5 watt transmitter and would totally get the job done. Kind of small too. But hey, if you want to learn CW, it gets even better. This is a mountain topper. Look how small this is, like a pack of cards about five watts probably a little bit less than that and you know what five watts on morse code out of a radio like this is about as effective as an 80 watt transmitter 80 watts up to a 100 watt transmitter on single sideband voice so that ft891 that you're lugging into the backcountry with a backpack and a battery and all this other stuff this guy is about as effective as that with a nine volt battery, um, more like a 10 volt battery, but uh, yeah, you get pretty much the same effectivity. Obviously it's Morse code, you have to learn Morse code, but if you're getting started and you're looking for your next radio, why not challenge yourself in two ways? Get your general and get Morse code proficient and get on the air with Morse code. I guarantee you will not be disappointed. And to be honest, I, I, I just prefer the use of the 705, that waterfall, the screen. For me, it's a lot easier to use. And most of the time when I'm going portable, I'm mostly relaxing when I do a pod activation. I know that sounds kind of crazy for some of you. I'm kind of just hanging out. If I want to aggressively go after a poda and get lots of contacts, I'm generally going to take a 100 watt radio. So it's largely either going to be my ICOM 7100 Go Box. Yeah, Go Box. Or uh, my FT891 or FT857. Uh, both the 7100 and the 857 are all in one radios. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, I might as well come back a little bit, right? I got the POTA portable operation stuff, encouraged you to get into HF off the, off the top here, because uh, really, I think you will find a lot of rewarding fun uh, by going that route. What if you don't want to go uh, any more than your technician, at least right now? Well, so for me, my recommendation is probably a mobile radio is going to be my recommendation. If you really did start the hobby with a Baofeng, radio and you've never experienced what it's like to have a 50 watt radio with a good antenna behind it maybe a mobile antenna maybe a permanent antenna that you have on the apex of the roof of your house then a 50 watt radio is really going to be impressive for you there are myriad options price is going to be what really decides it for you if it's me it's the first kind of like mobile radio that i'm going to get into it's really going to be dependent on the repeaters in your area and your local ham community if there are a lot of analog repeaters in your area then i really don't see any reason to spend more than what you'd do for an icom 2730a which is literally the radio that's behind me if however you live in a city or a county where there's a lot of digital voice modes then it's going to pay off to buy a radio that does digital voice again mobile radios so icom's a simple one if it's d star you pretty much have to get yourself an icom ic5100 if it is yesu system fusion then you have a bunch of different options you can go with the current uh in the market ftm 500 but there is also the ftm 300 and the ftm 200 so a myriad of different options all right base station radio so let's say you just want a a good radio to have that sits on a desk or in your ham shack which is we call our radio room then there are again myriad options there but you're going to spend more money right the trends today are big color screens with what we call waterfall or a pan adapter that gives you 
information both of instantly the signal intensity at the top of a waterfall of data on the bottom that shows you historically what has been the activity on the band. So for a minute or so, or maybe a little less than that, you can see what the activity has been like when you're looking at this kind of wide band space area. It's very effective to use a waterfall or band scope when you want to see where the activity is on the air without necessarily having to tune your radio over to it. If you see a very strong signal adjacent to where you're at, most of these radios, you can simply click it and it will jump you over to it. Functionality like that is definitely not free. And most of the base station radios that are out in the market today, 100 watt base stations are going to run you about $1,200 and up. So do appreciate that the costs start to go up from here and there's really no way around that unless you want to buy used, which is still a very, very good option for amateur radio. All right, so back to those big, beautiful base station radios. I have one kind of final recommendation that I have to make. Sure, I can give you uh, two or three radios that I would recommend that you take a look at. They are the ICOM 7300, the Yaesu FTDX10, and yes, I mentioned the FTDX10 before the FT710. I really like the FTDX10, and I feel if you're saving the money, you might as well just just go on up in the FTDX10. Uh, I think you get a lot more radio for it. Those are going to be the the base station radios that I would recommend, right? But here's here's my big point. And, and please don't just take those those two radios or three radios and just like, oh, pick one, close your eyes and, and flip a coin. You need to go hands on with this kind of stuff. You're talking about a twelve hundred dollar and up price that you're going to be dropping. Some of you might have the scratch that this is not a big thing, um, but even then, for, for you that, that may have that money lying around, I highly recommend you go hands-on with this stuff. You really need to touch the radio, interface the radio, and know that it's right for you. So much of the technology of amateur radios have improved across the decades that we're at the point where most radios coming out on the market are good. They're all good. The question isn't so much how down in the noise or how sensitive the receiver is because we're at the point where the differences at the top 10, top 20 even radios on the most sensitive radios, we can't even tell with our human ears. That's how sensitive they are. So what it's coming down to is user experience and user interface. How you enjoy operating the radio is the most important aspect of all of this. You could be sold on the 891, that portable radio I mentioned earlier, but you go hands-on with that thing and you might think to yourself, I really don't like this menu. And yeah, it's kind of clunky. We jokingly mentioned the deep F menu um, often in my live streams and in my after chat because it's kind of clunky, but it's really good at what it does. It's kind of like a sports car for doing parks on the air. It's, it's, it's effective. It's efficient. For base station, though, dropping that kind of coin, you really do need to go hands-on. So what do you do? Well, the easy case is you go find yourself a ham radio outlet. They have probably the most locations. Or you go to another brick-and-mortar store like Gigaparts or DX Engineering. If you are too far away from any of those fantastic ham radio retailers, what I then would recommend is that you join us online on some of our different social media groups. Particularly, I want to give a shout-out to my ham radio crash course discord the discord is a collection of chat rooms if you will that are broken down by different interest in amateur radio it is 100 percent running 24 7 all the time there is someone talking about amateur radio in some form or another it's a great place to ask your questions but it's also a great place to find out like what the local scene is like or possibly a, an adjacent scene where you might be able to piggyback with someone that's going to do a parks on the air activation you don't even have to be a general to do this you could be a technician just starting out you could just say hey i don't know anything about this parks on the air, but it's super interesting to me. I'm in Tallahassee. So anybody by Tallahassee, they might be doing a POTA this weekend that I can tag along. You'd be surprised how many people you might get back that say, yeah, I'm about an hour away. Why don't you drive out and you can take a look. And that's going to cover, that's going to kill two birds. One, it's going to show you, am I even interested in this POTA thing? And two, well, he's got a radio. Maybe I can take a look at what he's doing. And after he's done activating, maybe he can show me the ropes a little bit. That's the, that's the ticket right there. 
Of course, we also have a Facebook group, although as much as I love the Facebooks, actually, I take that back. I'm not a big fan of the Facebooks. Our Discord really is where a lot of this type of community exists now that we're not physically together, but we, we get as together as we can by using the, the Discord. So I really do encourage you to go uh, avail yourself of that if you can. I'm Josh KI6NAZ. I hope you found this helpful. Tell me if you found this helpful in the comments below. And a really good way to show me if you found this helpful is to click that thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click subscribe. I really appreciate it. If you click that bell, you get notified when I post a video like this, which I try to do a couple of times a week, and my live streams, which happens on Saturday, every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and every other Wednesday. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll talk to you later. 73.